Welcome to the Creative Contessa Unboxes. We have an exciting package today from the United Kingdom. Let's see what's inside. Boop. Cat can play with that. Aha, kitty. So, nicely packaged. Beautiful sheath. What's going to go inside of it? Indeed, this was exceedingly carefully packaged. So what could go inside of a sheath such as that? My God, this is very carefully packaged. Indeed. Aha. So we have a beautiful knife. So this is from Todd's Cutlery. And unlike the made in Pakistan crap that is frequently available for 15th century eating knives. This is actually craftsman made by an extremely skilled smith named Todd, <laughs> very uh, modestly named, who is based in England. And he, he smiths these blades himself. You can see this gorgeous brass fittings here, cast and the tang that goes all the way through the blade, which is very important for a good knife. You want a tang that goes all the way through the blade and then is, in this case, riveted in place with very nice walnut wooden scales. I found out these pieces are called, right? And this looks exceedingly sharp. Yeah, that's going to be exciting and it feels, fits very nicely in the hand. And of course, with these little notches there, it's really easy to grab it and use it as an eating knife. So that, of course, will fit in to this sheath like so. Well, we've got two other spots in this sheath. Let's see what goes there. Ah, gorgeous. So this is a 15th century eating spoon. This is made of brass, which is a very strong metal um, and is a very quality item. You can see that has this beautiful little cast tip. Right? And I found out that these are all made based on finds from the Thames River. Of course, the Thames River is filled with this anaerobic muddy soil layer on the bottom. And the lack of oxygen means that things survive. So that's how that fits in there. But there's one more spot. Let's see what that should go in there. Ha. So, this is also a gorgeous piece of work. Really finely smithed. So, you can see again, we have the matching brass ends. Tang that goes all the way through. It's, it's sufficiently pointy. So, I have, uh, many of us in the 15th century world have labored under the very likely misapprehension that this is an eating prick. You use it to stab chunks of meat, for instance. Except that I have never found any textual evidence of people eating in this manner. I have plenty of rules of etiquette on how to eat meat with your fingers. For instance, this is your beef finger, this is your chicken finger, uh, or beef and pork, chicken and fowl, and fish. And so you use each of those in combination with your thumb, right? And then this is your salt finger. So you use that to scoop up salt and uh, sprinkle it onto your food. No, I've never read anywhere in any primary source about using a prick to eat. So actually, I've been given to understand that this was not meant to be an eating implement, but that they always come together with knives because it is a knife steel. And you're supposed to use it to sharpen your eating knife as you need right there on the spot. I think that really actually sounds more likely as an explanation. Now, these there is evidence apparently, surviving evidence of a sheath with the knife and the sharpening steel together, but no actual extant evidence that these were ever put all in the same sheath. So we've got our knife, we've got our sharpening steel, In. 
oh, because I wasn't pushing hard enough. Violence is always the answer. <laughs> um, so this fits all nicely in as a three set. And of course, I can just suspend it from my belt so that I have this with me wherever I happen to go. And then I have the utensils to eat, whether I'm on the road or visiting somewhere else and they do not have the appropriate utensils for me. So as I said, there is no evidence that these three were ever kept in the same sheath, but it works, it's convenient. And when you live a 15th century lifestyle, convenience really is a fine thing. So this is also a quality sheath, it's molded leather. Thing to note about sheaths for your knives, the seam that connects the leather together should never be on the edge where the blade is because your blade will eventually cut through those stitches. So that is why on good sheaths, the seam is rotated around 90 degrees from the edge of the knife. So here's the edge of the knife, seam is here. And that's the way it should be. So if you want quality, and I recommend paying for quality, Todd, Todd's cutlery is the way to go. Yes, you can get cheap, made by mostly slave labor, crap from Pakistan and other such countries with no labor standards whatsoever. But I recommend, of course, buying handcrafted things by people who actually make a real wage and who are actually craftsmen, thereby supporting our own local economies. Okay, yes, it isn't exactly local. England isn't right around the corner from here, but high standard of living, so. Todd's cutlery for the win.